If you're new to shooting wine bottles, then you'll know that getting the perfect shot can be pretty tricky. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my top seven tips to show you exactly how to do that. Tip number one is to clean your wine bottles. As with any photography, any product photography, you wanna make sure you clean your product before shooting. The reason for that is even though you could Photoshop some things out, you're gonna get a much better result if you clean your products first. First of all, you're gonna waste a lot of time in post-production when you could have easily cleaned something. It takes quite a long time to Photoshop dust out and finger marks out. Number two reason is because you don't always get a better result in uh, when you're photoshopping things. It's always better to get it right in the camera first. So you want to use a microfiber cloth just like this. Give it a rub, you can use your breath like that. Hold it up to the light. You want to look into the light and just make sure there's no marks that you can see. So every little thing is going to show on your wine bottle. So you want to make sure that you take care of all that. Tip number two is to use a small aperture. When I shoot wine bottles, I like to shoot at f16, and I'm using a 100mm macro lens, which is a really, this is a really sharp lens. This is a Canon 2.8 L series lens. With this particular lens, f16 works well. You'll still get a nice sharp photo. I wouldn't go higher than f16 with this lens because, or I wouldn't go to f18, for example, just because it's gonna to start to soften up. It's still pretty sharp at f16. I mean, technically the sweet spot of this lens is probably down around f9 or f8, for example, but it's still plenty sharp at f16. And the reason you wanna use f16 is you don't need a lot of depth of field. It's only between there, the front of the bottle and the lid that you need to keep sharp. But with a 100 mil lens, and given that you're gonna be quite close to your subject, you really don't get much depth of field. If you go less than f16, so if you were to go f9 or f11, for example, what you'll find is the label will be in focus, whereas the lid will be out of focus. And that's not what you want when you're doing product shots. You wanna keep both of them in focus. So f16 is a good way to do that. Tip number three has to do with the position of the seam in the bottle. You'll notice that all wine bottles have a seam on each side. So one there, one on the opposite side here. And although obviously you can't move that seam, you wanna try and pick a bottle where the seam is to the side because that's just gonna be something you're gonna to have to Photoshop out. It doesn't look good having the seam there. If you can't do anything about it, that's fine. You can Photoshop it out. But if you can, put the seam to the side of the bottle. Choose a bottle like that. Tip number four is to control your lighting. And the best way to control lighting is to use strobes or flashes, or you can use speed lights as well. And that's really gonna give you a lot of control and it's gonna stop the ambient things in the room, like everything else in the room reflecting into your bottle. If you use continuous light, unless you can blank off or put curtains up everywhere, you're gonna get all those things reflecting right into your bottle. So using a flash is a good way or using a strobe is a good way to control that and not have to uh, put black curtains everywhere to stop the extra light getting in. The reason this works is with strobes, they're up very close to the subject and the light falls off very quickly. So it means that everything else in the studio isn't gonna pretend to light up too much. Sometimes you'll find though, if you are using strobes, it's gonna depend on the actual room. Every room is a little bit different when you shoot in. So if you're shooting in a room with white walls, for example, using the strobes, sometimes they will bounce off the wall and, and you'll get some white from the white wall reflecting into your product, in which case you may have to put like a black curtain up, something black just to block the light from bouncing off. One thing you can do to control your light is when you use modifiers like strip boxes, that's a very tight, narrow beam. You might put a grid on here, or you might put a grid up here, and that will help control the light spill. Sometimes be aware though that if you are using grids, the pattern from the grid is gonna reflect into the glass. So just be aware of what's gonna reflect and what's not gonna reflect. And controlling the light is really what's gonna give you that nice shape and the nice reflections in your bottle. The next tip is to use soft light. What you tend to get, when you use hard light, you're gonna get bright spots on your bottle. When you use a very small light, you'll get a bright spot showing. 
when you use nice soft light, diffuse light, like this diffusion paper here, you get this nice broad highlight, which tends to look good. As far as having reflections into your subject, given that it's glass, it is going to reflect. You are going to get reflections, but it's, what it's about is controlling those reflections in a way that looks pleasing, aesthetically pleasing, and using big broad diffusion paper like this or big soft boxes is one way to give you just a nice pleasing reflection so you're still going to get the light onto the label and onto the glass but it's not going to be ugly like it would be if you took it outside for example with the sun reflecting into it and trees and what god knows what else uh, reflecting into your bottle and the final tip for today is to define the edges of your bottle and what do i mean by define edges what i mean is if you shoot something on a white background, you'll notice that the edges tend to be soft and, and white. And that's the white background reflecting into your bottle. What you really want to do is you want to have nice hard edges on your wine bottle and that's going to give a very crisp look to your photo. It's going to define the shape of the bottle a lot better than the soft edges will. And the way to do that is what I've done in this case is I've put pieces of cardboard black cardboard on there and you can just move them you can move them in and out like that and you'll notice that when I go further out you'll notice there's that white edge there and when I come further in that's going to cut out that edge so you want to move these as close as possible uh, get that nice crisp edge as a final bonus tip today when you're shooting a bottle like this if you want to get a white background really there's you could do it in camera, but it's far easier to cut it out in Photoshop afterwards. If you did want to get a white background, what you'd do is you'd use some diffusion paper like this, or this background that I've got here is actually diffusion paper. It's got a product on it called Translum, which is a sort of semi-rigid um, plasticky diffusion material. What you do is have the light at the back on the background behind, behind it. You would turn that up and you could make that bright enough so that it's overexposed and with that overexposure means you're going to get a white background then the only thing you'd need to do is photoshop out this little riser when you're creating a white background like that you're going to need quite a bit of separation between your subject and your background this is not going to be enough because you'll get a lot of flare if you do that in, if you try to do it in this case the reason I don't do that is because I don't have a lot of space here. So what I tend to do is just Photoshop and just cut around the edges of the bottle using the pen tool. And that's how you're going to get it on a nice white background. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do subscribe to the channel and also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear how you guys set up your wine bottle shots and what your setup involves.